Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and I'm having a sort of look at features of Affinity Photo that sort of get overlooked but can be quite helpful. The first one I want to look at is like selecting and inverting a selection you have made. So you can use whatever tool you want to make a selection but I have quickly made a selection of this apple and and I'm as guilty as this as anybody else who makes videos um, about Affinity Photo or any of the Affinity programs that if you want to invert the selection or you want to deselect the selection we will invariably say either use the select menu where you can sort of invert the pixel selection or we will tell you to use the um, keyboard shortcuts which is control shift and I or command shift and I and if you want to deselect the selection you know we'd either use this menu or we would say to you use control and D or command and D now one thing that's pointed out to me recently in one of my videos is those options are already available up here in these three boxes here not so much this first one because this is just select all but the middle one will deselect your selection and the, the one on the right will invert your selection so all you need to do is just to click on one of these to to either deselect or invert your selection so Let's assume you like you've made your selection. I'm going to press Ctrl and J just to make a selection. So if I turn that off, you've now got that apple on its own layer. So that's when you would like deselect. But let me just bring this back, and I will then invert the selection. So now it is selecting the white area so if I press Control and J again and then I turn off the background and that one we then have just a selection of the background I mean I know you wouldn't do this in your own pictures but I'm just showing you that you can invert the selection or you can and if I now click on the middle one it will deselect so that selection area is now no longer available so that is like the first feature that I would like to say you know that most people sort of forget that these buttons are up here and like I said I'm as guilty of that as anybody right the second thing I want to sort of point out is most people seem to overlook although it's always there um, I don't think you can turn it off I'm not and I'm not 100% certain whether it appears in the iPad version of Affinity Photo but it is the status bar which runs along the bottom here and it will give you ideas on keys that you can press to sort of um, do certain things in the particular tool that you have selected so at the moment I'm on the move tool so it just gives you sort of the basics here but let's say we come down to a shape and this is at the moment set on the square but we got you know it tells you that you can if you press the shift key it will constrain proportions and if you press the control key it will create from a center point and there are other options here but if you want to do both of these like constrain proportions and create from a center point you can hold down both the shift and the control which I'm guessing on the Mac is shift and command so let me change the fill color of this because it won't show up on that white background and we'll pick a different shape we'll try let's try the triangle so I'm going to find, because I've got snapping on, I'm just going to find the center point, hold down 
control and shift and it will draw from the center and it will constrain the proportions i.e. they're all the same size of the square that this triangle that is set in so whatever tool that you select down here just keep an eye on this status bar here and it will give you the tips that you need to do certain things now the next thing I want to look at is there's a lot of people seem to miss out on and forget is this icon here and there's one here and there's one up here and you do find it in other sort of menus and options and this is the sort of menu button and it will give you more options for the particular tab that you are in so at the moment on the layers tab and if I click on this you know, you've got options like having small thumbnails, medium thumbnails and large thumbnails so if I click on this those thumbnails will now be much bigger let me put it back to small but if you come to say like the styles menu clicking on this will give you different options so making categories and importing categories and things like that and the same goes for like the brushes click on the menu here gives you the options to make and you know import it and what have you but in the color tab you get a different menu altogether so whichever tab you are in the menu that this icon will give you will be different so it's worth bearing in mind that if you're trying to do something in a certain tab and you can't seem to work out what it is just try well in this case the effects one doesn't have its a menu there are no options with the effects tab so nor the adjustments so you won't get it on every tab but if that menu icon is there it will give you some options that you may not think or remember that are available so that would be my third tip of things that people forget or didn't know about in the first place right my fourth item that some people will overlook is that like, most people will know that like, on a shape like this for example this little white dot uh, node at the top here if you put the cursor near to it it will change into a double ended arrow and from if you click and drag you can rotate however you want As, like I said most people know about that but you can also shear objects be it text or in this case a shape if you put the cursor between that white node and the red node there you will get two arrows one, you know, one point in each way and then you can shift and shear the object be it like in this case the triangle or text and similarly if you put the cursor close to the arrows on the left or the right and I'm guessing at the bottom yes at the bottom you can also shear your image or your text into a shape completely different and again you can still rotate it so that is again something that sort of people do overlook sometimes um, so that would be my fourth tip right my fifth and final thing that people may overlook is again we're going to go back to the looking at after you've made your quick rough basic selection and if I zoom in 
and you want to go around and have a look at your selection and see whether there's any bits that you've missed and sort of add them to your selection let me just lower this brush size and there's a bit up here I want to add so I've added that to my selection now because I've zoomed in I've got to have to keep moving around this apple to sort of check the edges now on the face of it you think you'd sort of go on the view to tall move it a bit more and then come back to your selection tool um, you know, which is obviously a bit very long winded and again you can also use the adjustments on the side but there are two other ways of doing this one is if you hold down the space bar the icon will change to a hand and then you can click and drag your way around to check any areas that you've missed and once you let go of the space bar you'll be back in the tool that you want now that is one thing that is overlooked another thing that is overlooked is the navigator tab which is here and this will get this dark area here is a representation of the area that is visible here and you can click and drag this I personally prefer this method rather than the spacebar method because I mean I don't have to go just the way round the edge I want I can just quickly go down to this edge or up to that edge or you know you have much more control over where this will end up so for my personal taste I prefer to use the navigator and I can just whiz round and select an area I want to deal with and, yeah, and if I zoomed in even more that area is much smaller and much more precise giving me more control in my humble opinion so then you can come around and find areas that you want to add or subtract from your selection and get a much better selection that way so let me just zoom out again so you know either use the spacebar to move around or in this case because it's zoomed out but if I zoom in you can move this around or use the navigation tab so basically that's my sort of five tips for things that people may overlook thank you for watching and goodbye